everyone welcome back to my channel i am super sick when i'm voice overing this but today we are going to yale university for a campus day tour so my campus tour left at around 9 30 a.m which meant that i had to be on the train to connecticut from new york at 6 30 a.m It was very rough because like it's spring break who wants to be on the train at 6 30 a.m on a friday but my distance was pretty straightforward all i had to do was get on one train and then one bus however i didn't end up taking the bus because i couldn't understand the connecticut transit system and like what car do they want me to buy they didn't really have apple pay i was like what's going on here the fare was only 175 but i was like how do you want me to pay and she was like cash and i was like I don't have a dollar seventy-five in cash. Where can I get a card? And the lady didn't know what to say. Anyways, aside from that rambling, I really did enjoy my ride. I mean, it's everything is kind of dead, so it wasn't as pretty as it could be, but it still was super calming, and I got a lot of work done. I will say that the New Haven terminal was so pretty, however the outside of that terminal reminded me a little bit too much of home. It looked just like the Bronx, which I was a little bit confused about, but then we made it to Yale University and I felt a little bit better. So to get to my tour, I had to walk down the Science Hall of Yale University, which was super pretty. They had this cute little bridge, and then my tour commenced. Our first stop was the Silliman's Residential Hall, which was absolutely beautiful. I mean, I will say it is gorgeous. They had these cute little beanbag chairs and a swing on a tree, and the views were gorgeous and to die for. Then we went to Central Campus, which is right next to Bernanke's library of rare books which i will show you guys later but for it being central campus it sure was really quiet and empty i guess the entire university was quiet and empty at this point I will say that campus is a lot smaller than I thought it would be. I mean, don't get me wrong, like Yale isn't tiny, but it wasn't very hard to walk from one end to the other, which I guess is really good for convenience purposes. But I don't know, I was expecting it to be a little bit larger. Then we went to Old Campus and I was able to see the Lucky Shoe statue, which you'll probably hear about if you visit. But Old Campus was, well, old and it did look that way, but it still was really pretty. I guess like Yale has really good old architecture, but I did learn that a lot of it is fake. Like an architect just wanted it to look old and a lot of Yale's campus is only 90 years old, which I was a little bit like shocked by, except for one building an old campus that was built in the 1600s. And then I made it to the biggest but prettiest library I've ever seen that was built like a cathedral. And yes, it was beautiful inside and outside. I wasn't allowed to really film that much when I first got there, so sorry for the weird angle. But in this library slash museum slash cathedral, there's tons and tons of exhibits and pieces that 
you know, you can read and learn a lot about, but also it's just a gorgeous place to study. I mean, there's lots of study rooms for you. So overall, it's just really nice atmosphere here. Now the campus is broken up a lot by these city streets because New Haven is still a city. So I will say that it kind of takes you away from the Yale experience every time you get to one of these intersections because it's still the city. It reminds me a lot of New York. This building is one of the secret societies here at Yale University and if you'd like to guess which one it is, please leave a comment below and I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. But again, there is a lot of city streets in Yale University, it kind of is giving NYU vibes so there's lots of Yale campus that's at the edge of the city so you do get that city experience while also that old timey like cottage core vibe. Then we visited Pearson's residential hall, which was absolutely gorgeous, but their food at the dining hall gave me food poisoning and I vomited on the way home. So um, not the best experience, but their residential hall is pretty. I guess in this one, they have their own library and it's like absolutely gorgeous as well as study spaces. And each residential hall has its own unique purpose. So some have movie theaters, some have underground like arcades and stuff. This one has a library that's only for the residential hall students. So this was the senior suites and these were the junior suites and they do break up the seniors, juniors and sophomores, which I think is a little bit weird because I thought you would want connectedness, but still I guess since you're all in the same residential hall, you're not too far away from each other. But yeah, you do have to walk a lot of these blocks in these city streets in order to get from one residential hall or one part of campus to the other. Then my tour guide took me to one of the classrooms here at Yale, which just looks like a standard classroom. It's nothing really um, impressive. It looks like a school building because it is a school building, but we did get to learn that you are able to book these classrooms when they're empty in order to study with your friends, which is a cool touch that Yale has. And then I learned that their bell tower is played by students and they play a different pop song every single day. I wasn't able to guess today's pop song, but I still thought it was cool that there's students up there playing at every, I think, 45 minute to hour interval. And then I was able to sit in on an architecture class of urban planning, which was so cool. They were learning about diets and food scarcity in New Haven. And I thought it was just super something, like super something, I think. It was super cool to be able to experience a class run by a professor at Yale University and yeah, it was dope. And also the architecture building, though it's really ugly on the outside, has super cool pieces on the inside. Now we are back at the Bernanke Library, which was 
gorgeous it was gorgeous and it was beautiful and i loved it in there though it's a lot smaller than i thought it would be i won't lie i was just kind of confused but i do see why it's so enclosed and so sacred because the amount of security measures they have in order to protect these books is insane but i guess there is so many rare books that you have no choice All of the books are behind rare glass, so you aren't able to touch them for the books and safety purposes, but I was able to look at them and read some of the titles. And then they have this really cool sculpture that's like in a hole, and no one really explained to me why it's down there, but it was cool to look at. I was just a little bit confused. And this is the central dining hall and central campus that was like newly built, and apparently it has the best food there, but I was totally fooded out because I had food poisoning at this point. Um, but I still was able to explore before I wrapped up and headed home. Yale is absolutely gorgeous and really beautiful, but it's just something different about it that confused me a little. It wasn't like, you know, the Yale you see on camera, so I will say that if you are planning on going here, make sure that you go and visit before you confirm your spot so that you know if you like it or not. And on my way home, I was harassed by a scary man in the train station terminal who called me all different types of names and I was super confused because then I remembered I was back in the city and no longer in Yale. But that about does it for this video. I wrapped up. I left there around 4pm and I got home around 6 but the train ride was super sweet and home and I edited this video on my way back. So as always, bye everyone and I will see you all next time.